After using Windows for more than 20 years, I have decided to try out Linux. Microsoft privacy is a hot topic these days, but that is not a reason for me to switch to Linux. The reason for me is a Reddit community, Unix Porn, where people are sharing beautiful screenshots of their Linux setup. And I really love how it looks and I want to set it up like that. It's probably easier said than done, but worth a try. And the second reason is... So I can say I use Arch by the way when I go on a date. Since there are loads of Linux distros, why bother checking the pros and cons of each and every single one when I can just choose the hardest one and go with it, also known as Arch Linux. It is actually pretty simple to get started. Go to Arch Linux official website, click on download, scroll down to mirror links and then select the first ISO image and download will start. After downloading Arch, I had to make a backup of my Windows key in case I regret installing Arch and I have to go back to Windows. Now I have to cook that ISO image to USB using Rufus. It is simple as selecting the downloaded Arch ISO image and clicking start. There are some warnings, didn't read them. Clicked OK, wait a few minutes and we are ready to go. Next I check how to enter boot menu on this Asus laptop and in my case it is S or F8. Proceed with restarting. And now I mash the S key as fast as I can, until the boot menu opens. When boot menu opens, click install Arch and here we go. I have already moved all the files from this laptop to a cloud, at least I hope, because I will delete the windows completely and only Arch will be installed here. So here I'm trying to figure out how to install this beast. I'm using Arch install script and this is my second try installing, because first try failed for some reason and I didn't bother checking out why. I guess I didn't set up my partitions correctly, so in the second try I have chosen an option to partition my disks automatically. For desktop environments I have selected KDE Plasma and Hyperland because Hyperland is what the Reddit community uses and that's what I want to set up to look as nice as it can and KDE Plasma so I can actually use this thing until I figure out Hyperland. For additional packages I searched on my main PC what packages I should install and I got a huge list of the packages and chose what I thought would be good for me. Installation took some time, but once it was done I had to restart my PC and I was greeted with login screen. Once I entered my credentials we were in and it already looks very nice and modern. I had to start Wi-Fi networking services manually via console so I can connect to a Wi-Fi network and then I immediately set up OBS for recording after I solved some issues that happened when hitting the record button. Now that I can record screen on Arch it is time to go through checklist of items I would like to accomplish on Arch. First is video recording and since I already managed to do that I will check that off. Then after that comes audio recording, video editing, image editing, coding, gaming and for the last I will leave check Hyperland. So let's begin. The first one on the checklist is audio recording. So I need to install Audacity. To install Audacity you go to Arch Wiki, search for Audacity to check how is the package called and then you install it using pacman. The process is very simple. Once it's installed I opened Audacity, checked audio input and output and recorded a test track and it works. Now I can check off audio recording from checklist. Next on the list is video editing and I already installed a software for video editing while I was installing Arch Linux. Software is called Caden Live which I don't normally use but I will give it a go since I'm looking for a good video editing software. I inserted a previously recorded clip in Caden Live and I like how it looks. It feels more professional than the one I currently use and the tool I mostly use for editing is a cut tool. Tried it, works pretty well, easy to locate and now I'm honestly thinking of switching to this software instead. Video editing is also a success and I can check that off as well. Now, image editing. I know there is software for image editing that works well on Linux, but I paid for Affinity Photo, which is a better version of the evil subscription based software and I would like to use it here on Linux. Since this software is not compatible with Linux, I had to make Linux run this software as a Windows. So I tried installing it in a few different ways. I tried using Vine, Bottle, I ran every command I found and unfortunately I haven't managed to install it. I'm not saying it is not possible to run it on Linux, 
There are people who reported that they got it working and I invested probably an hour in total into this before I gave up and move on to a different task. So for now I will mark this one as a not successful on the checklist. Next is coding and for that I need VS Code. Once again I go to ArchWiki to check what is the name of the package I need and there are three versions of VS Code. I decided to go with Microsoft's official package which has to be installed using Yay. I have no idea what is the difference but I guess this is the one I need. Installation took some time but it is still simple and straightforward process. Once it was installed I tried opening it via console and it works perfectly. I haven't seen default looking VS Code in a very long time. Anyway I haven't coded anything I have just seen that VS Code opens as it should and then ran the npm commands for my code and it works with no issue. So I can check off coding from the list. In order to do some gaming on Arch, I had to install Steam. And to install Steam, I had to enable Multilib repository. And then install Steam using Pac-Man. Once again, very simple and straightforward process pretty much. And I was able to start Steam in no time. I have selected Dome Keeper as a test game, since it was small in size and I haven't had to wait long time for it to download. But that game is Linux compatible, so I haven't had to tinker with wine, bottle and other stuff the same I had to do when I tried installing Affinity Photo. I would say I was lucky for choosing the Linux compatible game, so I dodged a bullet. Because I did not know at the time that it's not possible to play any game as simple as this one on Linux. Once I clicked play, Vulkan shaders were automatically installed. And just like that I was in a game. Even though this game does not require high-end PC to play it, it is still impressive to have over 200 FPS because I'm playing this on a laptop which doesn't even have a graphics card. I don't play a lot of games lately because of my current situation. Link in top right corner. So I will mark this as a success. And now the part about which I'm most excited about. Checking out Hipperland. It is a tiling window manager which means everything stack next to each other instead of having windows on top of another. And it is simple to manage multiple desktops by pressing windows key and then desktop number I want to see. This is at the moment default theme but maybe in a future I record a video of me setting up Hipperland to look nice or how the reddit community calls it I will raise the arch. For some reason I don't have connection here on Hipperland but I will figure that out some other time. I call this a success as well. So there we go I can do everything on Arch Linux as I can do on Windows PC except use Affinity Photo. I do believe I will manage to make that work as well. I just need to invest enough time into it. So what are my conclusions after using Arch for a couple of weeks? On one hand I appreciate the raw and customizable nature of Arch. The feeling of being a power user learning about the system and tweaking every aspect of my setup has been incredibly rewarding. The process of rising Hyperland and setting up my environment has been both fun and educational. However, Arch Linux isn't without its challenges. The unpredictability of certain components failing or not working as expected can be frustrating. For someone like me, for whom the time is a critical factor, link in the top right corner, having to spend hours troubleshooting issues with basic functionalities can be a a major setback. It's one thing to enjoy the learning process, but it's another to face roadblocks that interfere productivity. So should you use Arch Linux? It really depends on your needs and circumstances. If you are passionate about Linux, enjoy a high degree of customization and have the time to troubleshoot and learn, then Arch can be a fantastic choice. It offers a deep learning experience and the ability to tailor your system to exact preferences. On the other hand, if you are someone who values stability, out of the box functions functionality and minimal maintenance, you might want to consider other distributions. Arch can be demanding and requires a willingness to face and solve various issues on your own. For those who want a smoother experience but still want the flexibility and learning curve of Arch, I recommend trying an Arch-based distro like Manjaro. It provides a more user-friendly experience while retaining many of the benefits of Arch. I have already started rising my Arch, bit by bit. And if my Arch setup stops working for some reason, that is what I plan on doing. Installing Manjaro and continue from there. With linux.config folder, it is easy to transfer my customizations and settings to different distributions. So there you have it. Thanks for joining me on this journey into Arch Linux. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more amazing videos. Have any tips, questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. 
see you in the next video. Oh yeah, I use Arch by the way.